Question of the day, what is your favorite two-player game? And no, I don't mean games that played a lower player count like Carl and I recently discussed on Board Game Breakfast. No, I mean what's your favorite two-player game, period. Because today we're taking a look at two classics. We're going to take these two and bash them together, see which one comes out on top. It'll be kind of like the Legion of Doom and Arn and Tully or the Brain Busters, whichever version of those you prefer. Could be some Doomsday device going on, might be a little DDT, we don't even know. Let's take a look at these two classic games, Jaipur and Lost Cities. Let's see which one comes on top. So direct user interface, first of all. Both of them are card games. You have cards in your hand, you're looking at them, and you either play or draw cards. Well, you're gonna draw cards in Lost Cities, but you're either gonna take cards or play cards in Jaipur. Now, they're very similar, too, because the direct user interface is based on Vincent Dutrait's art. Well, it's not based on Dutrait's art, but it is Dutrait's art, which is such a fantastic addition to any game. You heard me talk about this all the time. And seeing it, it just really elevates these games that could have been themeless abstracts. They really could. So now let's talk about the actual mechanics. Here's how both of them play. So let's talk first rather distinct styles. Notice that both of these games have art from Vincent Dutre. You can see it definitely in the faces, but uh, it's also in the credits, but uh, that's always good. Anytime he's doing art is just, I'm in. So these are the two games we're talking about. Both of them are two player card games. Let's see what makes them different right now. So you'll start the game, you'll lay the board out, Shuffle the cards, deal everybody eight cards. That's the game setup. That's something I really love about Lost Cities. First of all, you'll notice your hand has two types of cards. These handshake or agreement cards, and then these numerical cards of uh, different suits or adventures, really. So tens are always the actual finding of the Lost City. What's gorgeous about this, and I'll show you in a minute, these, every single one of these, all of these colors are big panoramas that Dutrait did for each color. So it starts at two and goes all the way to 10. But that's essentially what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be playing down a card, either onto your tableau or discarding it, and then drawing a card either from the top of the deck or from one of the discard piles, just not the same one. Basically the reason that is you can't stall. You can't put this one down, pick it back up, and stall and just slow roll, which you will have to take a different card. So for our turn, it might be smart for us to go ahead and put down this agreement card and we'll take one from the top of the deck now why that's important boy these aren't shuffled very good <laughs> let's just give them a cut for a minute and get from a different area why that might be good is because the agreement cards what they do is they multiply your score so really the game is all about scoring you're that's all you're going to do is you're going to place down a card and draw a card place down a card draw a card uh, back and forth across the table now the interesting thing is though once you get these out here those are gonna multiply your score. Now you have to lay your cards in ascending order. So starting with the five may not be the best thing because you lose the two, three, four at that point. But, so now I have five, seven. Um, let's do over here, I would have the five. Need a couple more to show you what will happen. Let's get the six, seven. Does that do it for us? Six, seven, and 10. So let's just say this is the end of the game here and we will put this out here for good measure. And this here for good measure to show you the downside of playing not carefully. So now we have four of these cities in our tableau. Now here's how you do the scoring. You add up your numerical value of the pips. So this would be five and six is 11, plus seven is 18, plus 10 is 28. Then you subtract 20 from your cost no matter what. It's the cost of the expedition. So we subtract 20 from it, which leaves us, what did I say, 28, so eight. Eight points. Now you multiply it by two by three. So each additional card you have is another multiplicator, or multi multiplier. <laughs> oh my gosh, multiplicator. There's another multiplier. So this is eight times three, so it's 24 points right here. This, if I'd have left it blank, would have been zero. Because I put this card down here, it's negative 20, obviously, because it costs 20 points. Then you multiply that again. So this is negative 40 for this. This would be 17, because well, negative 17 because you have three minus 20, so negative 17 times two, so this is negative 35. So, and, the, well, and this of course is seven to five is 12, so it's negative eight. 
It is smart, however, this is where the strategy really comes in, where it is smart where if you know you're not going to be able to finish, even if you, you, you think you can at first and then you're like, oh crud, I've already played cards here and there's no way, still try to get those cards out of your hand to mitigate the damage that this is going to do to you. But that is how you play Lost Cities. All right, so at the beginning of the game, you will lay out three camel cards and deal two random cards to the market. You will then stack the uh, tokens here for the different goods in descending order, so the highest points on top. You get five cards in your hand, and then you take any camels you have and lay them in front of you. Camels don't count against hand limit, which is seven, but they're almost like a wild card, because on your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either take cards or sell cards. So. In our case, we're going to take cards. So we're going to take a single card here of the silver. Now, you could have either taken a single card, you could have taken all the camels, which means you'll take those and put those here, or you could take cards out of your hand and trade them to the market for the ones that you want. So say I wanted that other silver, instead of taking it outright, I could have traded these two in to the market and gotten the other silver. So then I've got three silver to, to, to sell. The other option you can do is sell a card. Now when you sell cards, what you're going to do is you're going to take the amount of cards you want to sell, so three silver, deposit them in the discard pile, and then you'll take that many tokens of that type. So one, two, three. They're worth the points listed on them, so these are five, they're worth five points. Also, depending on the number of cards you sell, three, four, or five, you will get a bonus token. These three ones are usually ones and twos, and you have some uh, in the fours, they're like three, four, five. Uh, so good bonuses there and then over here it's you know big six ten stuff like that six eight ten like a triangle but the interesting thing is you could sell essentially a whole lot of these cheaper leather cards even though they're worth less and if you sell five and get this bonus you might come out better but there are quite a few resources in the game there's the red ones that are worth a lot the only rule is with the silver gold and rubies is that you have to sell at least two of those you can't just sell one to try to take it everything else you could if you wanted to just sell one so uh, this is the distribution of the types of cards you see there are actually more silver cards than there are silver tokens the game ends when two of these are gone i'm sorry when three of these re the game ends when three of these resources are gone or the deck can't refill you end and you score based on what you have just to add up your points the person with the most points wins the game however the person with the most points uh, most camels wins the camel token for a plus five. You typically play three rounds. So you play, you know, best out of three, which is why you collect these. So the person with the most points wins the token. Person with two of these tokens wins the game. So at the end of the day, which of those two is really going to suit your fancy? Well, here's the thing. They both do a couple things really well. Uh, they both have do trades art. We talked about that. So they both win for that. However, Lost Cities is panoramas, just like you see here. And that's gorgeous. You absolutely can't touch these panoramas. They're amazing. So purely art and presentation, I'm going to give it to um, uh, Lost Cities. However, components, i got to give it to uh, Jaipur just because those little tokens are nice. And having actual tokens to pick up and look at your points, that's cool. Your brain has to do hurdles to count them all up at the end. It's like 7 plus 2 plus 9 plus 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5. That's a little tricky, but, you know, uh, I do like... The way that looks. I like to grabbing the tokens. I like the fact that you sell the cards to grab tokens. I think that's a cool addition uh, to that. So, components wise, it goes to Jaipur. Presentation and art wise, it goes to um, Lost Cities. However, total package between the two of those, I'm still going to pick Lost Cities over that because of the way it looks with those panoramas and things once you play them. Now, granted, those don't come into play unless you turn your cards sideways. Uh, but it's there and you know it and you start piecing it together and it's thinking, wait a minute, I've seen the other side of this piece before and it almost becomes like you're exploring these lost cities, which is interesting. So as far as the mechanics themselves, you just saw how to play them both. Let's talk about which one has the better mechanics when it comes to playing games. So scoring method wise, I really enjoy the very Knizia version of you add these totals up, then you subtract 20, and then you get your total, and then you multiply it. Could be in the negative, could be in the positive. I really like the scoring method there. I love the push and pull. I can stretch this out if I take a, a throw-off card. Uh, I just I like the way this one plays. I like the way Lost City scores. I like the way it plays. It's very simple. Play a card, draw a card. Play a card, draw a card. But there's so much more strategy involved in it than that than you wouldn't believe. I mean, watching what other people play, watching what gets played down, and think, well, I can now go ahead and play my six, or I can play my seven, you know. I love that. Whereas Jaipur, 
it's a lot more of a race. You're like, I've got to get these out there quick. I've got to get that silver faster. I've got to trade in these camels. And that's something I've failed to mention in the how-to is you can trade your camels in as part of that trade-in option. So you trade in camels instead of cards out of your hand. Granted, as long as you don't break the hand limit of seven by the end of your turn, you're fine. So you, it's more of a race. You're thinking, I've got to get those silver. I've got to get those gold. But I also want to get enough gold so that I can sell five gold and... You know, or four gold and uh, and get the bonus, and five silver and get the bonus. So you're going to maximize your points if you're able to sell five of those at a time. So you're kind of having to, it's almost like a push your luck of do I wait, do I wait, or do I go now to stop them from getting those points. So uh, both are great games, but at the end of the day, the mechanics was the one I enjoyed just a little bit more than the other one because it feels like the strategy is just a little trickier is going to be Lost City. So at the end of the day, end of this review, the one that comes out on top, raising their hands in victory, probably Earl or Dave Hebner doing it, is in fact Lost Cities. But go pick up both of these games. And they're actually both apps. You can play both of them right now in your home. You can go download and play them. So check out Lost Cities. Check out Jaipur. But uh, if you can get them in, in person, it's really cheap to get Lost Cities at Target, somewhere like that. I think you can get Jaipur. I thought you could get it for a while. It's uh, like, uh, no, obviously your FLGS if they're open, but uh, you know, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, somewhere like that. So both great games, both good two-player card games. Go enjoy those, and uh, let me know what you think is the best two-player game in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Brian, we'll see you.